All right, all right, let's go. All right, all right, Tim. I'd like to say uh, Carolina Taravayan, uh, is I think that's how you pronounce his name, uh, had his hand chopped by uh, Paul Pajot, and, uh, and his hand is uh, fractured. Uh, well, I think it's fractured. Well, it's broken. He's out for the season. He's, he's gone for the playoffs. He might be back, though. But anyhow, it changed the gloves. I, 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 I don't understand why they don't change the gloves. I just yeah. don't. So this is Sunday morning, yes. and um, the Canes are up 2-1 on the Islanders. Now, Dad, you got to look at uh, um, Brindamore. He's lost their top two forwards, yeah. and then he looks, he's lost. He look, and, he, and, if you take a look at him on television, he looks, he looks like he's a little worried. And now they lost another top four, four forward. Like what, like what goes through your mind if you're, if you're a you coach? You don't even think of them. They're gone. Gone. You don't even, you don't even think of them. No, nope. just Good. next guy up. Next guy up. Yeah, after the game, though, when you're driving <laughs> home, you think of the guy out. Never will I ever forget Park. The last shift of the exhibition game in Halifax. Kind of caught his, uh, caught his rut in a rut. And he didn't have good knees to start with. God, I never forgot that. Never for, I, that's the one injury I'll never forget. One guy I don't understand and I thought would be playing better would be Bo Hor- Horvath. Uh, he signed an eight-year, mil- eight $68 million contract in his three playoff games with the Islanders. He has no goals and no assists and no points and a grand total of six shots on net. Well, maybe Vancouver knew something about him and that's why they got rid of him. Well, talk, I, I said that before. Talk, they were trying to get rid of him for how long? Talk, it was there less than 10 days and they traded him. Well. And Lou Lamorello who didn't sign him, yeah. said what they think of the contract. He says, too much and too long. So, yeah. and Lou I like that. Lou Lamorello, he doesn't fool around. He just said, too much and too long. So, Dad, I came over to Tim's place for the last three uh, Toronto games, <laughs> yeah. and it's always fun coming over and watching the games with you. And uh, I always like asking you questions about the game. and you always All have, right, go ahead. You, you always have a good, a good answer, and, always, and most of the time it relates to when you played or coached and everything. So, of course, the Lightning, they scored early in the, early in the game, right? And yeah. I say to you, why doesn't the goalie tell the defenseman to stay out of his way so he can see the puck? I just don't understand that. And and I said, well, why doesn't the goalie talk more? And you had a funny story about Jerry Cheevers. Well, Jerry Cheevers, if the, if they were breaking in, when they were breaking out, he started stay up, stay up. <laughs> I used to hear him holler stay up all the time. Stay up. What does that mean? Like, well, that, just stay up. Don't don't go. Don't, don't back pinch in. in. Don't, yeah, don't back in on him. Oh, okay, and, that's what that means. And I said, I got the defense together, and I said, don't pay any attention to this guy. So I, how many how many go- uh, coaches would tell their defensemen not to pay any attention to what the goalie has to say? Well, I I, I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. It I was do- it was Doki that Gary Doak. Yeah, who always would who would always stand up and then get beat and then they get and then they'd score and then you started you Doki, what are you doing? What are you doing standing up? Well the goaltender keeps hollering at me to stand up. I said, Yeah, you stand up, the goalie walk the guy got walks around you, the goalie's standing there, and then who do I blame? I blame you. Don't pay any attention to him back in. See, but they don't realize or a lot of people don't realize you were the defenseman in front of Jerry Cheevers in Rochester. I remember he used to holler at me all the time, and, oh, and everybody else. He used to he, he, all his career. He, he used to holler, "Stay up!" And, and, he, and you could hear him all over the arena, "Stay up! Stay up! Stay up!" <laughs> and don't stay up. And they used to back in, and he he get mad. But the thing, his big thing was either block the shot or get out of the way. Right? Get it? He, yeah. he wanted what he wanted to do 
actually is to see the puck. Well, well, I don't think that's asking too much from a from for a goalie to ask well, his defenseman to stay out of the way. I mean, how many of the times do you see the defenseman go down? They sort of want to block the shot. They pull the flamingo or whatever, and uh, you know it goes in. And a goalie's in there. A lot, lot of goals in the playoffs. Goalies are really screened. Like yeah. you really see now, guys standing in front of the net. And and they're going to stand in front of the net, and, and you have to be very very strong to push them out of the way to see. But they don't even try; they try to block the block, shot. They try to be the goalie. Yeah. Another question I always I say to you is, I don't know, Dad. In in our day, when we when in the NHL, the goalies would stand up, you know. And now I get well, it that the style is down low, crouching, and all that other stuff. But I like to keep track of how many goals are shot. Well, you shoot scored. Hard. Above the goalie's shoulder. Well, they they shoot high. They sh- well. As soon as they see the guy down all down. the time, all the time, and and the, in the butterfly, they uh, they shoot high. So and why don't they, they stand they, up more? But Cindy, I, you're asking the wrong guy here. I don't know why they don't stand. <laughs> well, blame Patrick Waugh. He started it. Yeah. Was oh, that it, it? Yeah. He and it worked for a while. It was really well, good. Well, it's still. I mean, the goals are pretty big. I mean, it's. Yeah, uh, they're pretty big. All right, but I I always keep track of the goals. I mean, I don't I don't have too much of an interest, but I say, well, he went over his shoulder. Well, you were, you, shoulder. you had Dell. Dell was a. Uh, Dell stood up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dell stood up all the time. Get up. Get up. I said, you look, I remember saying, you look like a seal. I remember your, your saying used to be when the goalies were down, you look like a seal out there flopping around. <laughs> throw <laughs> well, him a fish. I don't fish. remember that. <laughs> throw him a fish. Yeah, throw him a fish. But, but Cheevers used to, he was a stand-up goaltender. Yeah, all those guys all, were, all the of them were back then in the seventies. Well, they were. It wasn't, le- it was it wasn't, le- wasn't until like uh, no, a long time. A long time they stopped the puck along the ice, and that, that butterfly was pretty good. But uh, th- well, it doesn't th- take the players long to figure out. Well, let them go down. And it shoot did. High. It did. It took them about a year and a half to figure it out. Yeah. Second one high. I always have the second one high. So, Dad, the Leafs are up two one. They had a big game. This is Sunday morning. They had a big game last night, and um, so let's talk about that game with the refereeing. So the the big question for he, the Leaf he, fans and for especially Tampa and Cooper. Should that have been five minutes on? Uh, you say yes that uh, he should have got the the, the five minute major. Oh, and, absolutely! And it should have been a penalty. Should at least it should have been a penalty. If, if 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 not interference because he was too he he didn't want to go in the corner first to get the puck. Well, I don't. So know. Uh, he 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 pushed him. You can see his hands. He pushed him. And <laughs> I like the refs kind of go five minute major for the for the Toronto Maple Leafs. You know, Riley five minute major. 10-minute game misconduct. They'll have a hearing with the league. No, nah, never mind. Uh, at least you got a two-minute power play. I mean, <laughs> that's what I was confused about. How, after all that, did the Leafs <laughs> get the After all power? over, they, they get a power play. I don't understand. Well, so what did you think of uh, Stamkos? Well, what did you think? Should it have been a penalty? No. Well, it should have been a penalty, but I... But I, not five minutes? Not five minutes. Two minutes. So from, how, how did it work out just to... I was watching the game, but I still couldn't figure it. should have had a power play. But how did the Leafs end up with a power play? Because Stamkos grabbed and beat up Matthews. Yeah, they don't like that. They don't like a fight starting after a fight. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, and Matthews had, uh, he had one of his, he had, if, if you remember, he had two sticks in his hand. He had one of Stamkos' sticks. And Stamkos said, to, and turned to the linesman and said, he's got one of my, he's got my stick. That's why I drilled him. They said that was the first time in NHL history that two 60-goal scorers had a fight. You don't see that. Well, it was a pretty good fight. Yeah, you know, Matthews did okay. But I have to say, Dad, like I was thinking that Vasilevsky was going to be the difference, but that the Leafs goalie well, Samson. He, he, he played pretty good. He didn't play. Yeah, his, but Samson off, the Leafs goalie won that game yeah. for He stole that game yeah. for them last night. Well, but, that's what you have to have. You have to have a goaltender steal the game for you. So, Cindy, you've been watching all three games. What have you been? Well, you know, I, I do analyze the game, and uh, it doesn't take much for me to pick up something. Is I got to tell you, and I'm going to tell you because I'm not the only one that notices that couple behind the bench <laughs> of the first game <laughs> irritated me so much on their friggin' phones. I mean, there they are. You know, God knows how much money they paid oh, for those, those seats. Oh, those seats over a thousand bucks. And there Easy. they are looking at their stupid phones. Well, they were every seeing themselves time. on TV. Well, 
I mean, watch the game or something. I know, but at they least, won't. At least they weren't eating. That we had to watch them eat. But the phone thing, and I, I hear it was uh, brought up on uh, social media. Like, yeah, what? the guy said the only thing more annoying than the refereeing is watching those two people you know, behind the bench funny, looking at their phones. It's funny thing that you bring up the referee. They, they call a hooking and holding, and when they go to the penalty box. I mean, hooking and holding. It, it is absolutely ridiculous to hook and holding. And then the guy get drilled into the boards like that. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing happens. Okay. So bunting, dad, the big thing, bunting's hit in game one. What did you think of him getting three games? Well, three games, it doesn't, doesn't make any difference. And the coach was just as happy with three games as two games or three games. Yeah. And then they they put like here's the thing I don't get too with the Leafs that you know those games are getting a little little rough and they don't put Wayne Simmons in they put that they put that rookie they're gonna make that knives a hockey player if it <laughs> if it costs them a Stanley Cup like why would you not have a guy because I don't think there's too many guys on Tampa that want to fool with Simmons well nobody wants to fool with uh, with Simmons because he's a pretty tough guy and I don't know I, well I, that's the way it is that's that's the uh, and they won, so you can't, uh, you can't. Yeah, I guess. Yep, yeah, they're up. So they're up two one, and we'll next podcast we'll see how they did. It's it's amazing though how we were saying you watching how much they hit. Like a lot of people say, no, why can't they play like that all the time? The playoffs. I always say that. <laughs> I always. You, say, you, you wouldn't. wouldn't you wouldn't have any hockey players left at the end. The way they're playing now. Yeah, but, but, the way. but when you used to say that, you say, Cindy, they can't play that tough of hockey. And I said, well, so then what you're saying, this is the conclusion that I would have, is that they pace themselves during the season. Well, I told you that. I said the, it's, the season means nothing. But if Boston goes out and loses it, the season they had means nothing. Okay, Dad, so speaking about Boston, they're up 2-1 on the Panthers. Yeah, and playing well. Well, the funny thing is, I remember, Cindy, we were talking before the game. Dad said, Boston's going to struggle at home, which they did. And he says, as soon as they get to Florida, they'll play better. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, well, Boston did not play well in the first two games. And in fact, and when they won the first game, they were struggling. Yeah. They, they, they Are you were saying struggling. they're nervous in front of their own I fans? Don't, don't ask, I don't know why. But I knew they'd play better in Florida, in which they did. They played yeah. pretty good. Well, they're lucky they're Florida to win both those games at home. And with their Bergeron, I mean, I think he's going to be back the next game. Yeah, they said he's sick. Have you seen that where flus have gone around the dressing room? You know, it's funny thing is they, it always starts with the kids at home. And some, somebody will have a bug or something, he won't carry it, and he'll come to the dressing room, and it, and it just flies around because they're they're sort of weak anyhow for the playoffs and everything like that and they work hard and <laughs> goes around the dressing room and but once it gets through, done it's pretty good it's called natural immunity right yeah <laughs> what is it i can natural immunity i can What's... remember the bruins at the end of the seat at the end of the playoffs they were so thin and gaunt yeah they, remember how they all looked I re- like can i tell a story i gotta tell a story about bobby miller it was really good I think they take a, a, a pleasure in that they're all so pale and you can actually see the veins in their arms. And their, anyhow, Bobby Miller was a college guy and what happened is he, he went out and got went fishing and he got a big tan. We're all white and everything like that and Schmutz, he come up, Bob, Bobby, uh, Bobby Schmutz come up and he says, look, look at Miller back there. And he was all tanned. I mean, he looked like a... So I went back and I said, what's going on? And he says, what do you mean what's going on? He says, look at you. You look like you've been out fishing. He says, well, I was out fishing. I said, well, look at the rest of us. We're all pale. We look like we're dying. And you, you look like you've been out uh, having a good time. And he said, well, what do you want me to do? I said, get rid of it. <laughs> you picked on him a lot, Dad. Yeah, I did. You did. Bobby Miller he, he, uh, from Bellarica, Mass. Well, I remember the one thing you guys, you laughed at that uh, was before, it was like a before uh, the afternoon before a game. You guys were playing Montreal. Oh, and yeah. so you're saying you said a few words. Yeah, you, know, you don't you weren't a big on speeches, so you said a few words and it was all over. He goes, All right guys, let's get going. We beat teams better than this. <laughs> so you looked at him, you said, Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. You, you you've beat the team better than the <laughs> Montreal Canadiens is gonna have nine Hall of Fame. Like, who did you play, Bobby, that was better than this? Yeah. And he's oh, Remember the there. time you got done with the speech and wasn't it him that started to clap or oh, something? Oh yeah. And and like like they do, they, they do in uh, junior and that college thing. hockey. Well, I think they do in the national hockey league. When the coach gets through, it makes you feel good, you know. Yeah, and and even even when you get heck, you know, if you clap, it makes you feel good. 
or it makes coach feel good. And he started, he clapped. What the hell are you doing? What are you like? <laughs> poor kid. What is this? Oh, poor kid. Every time he, he did something, we're, we're always on him. Cindy and Dad, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Spreads.ca. They're a Canadian-owned online sports book and casino, and if you sign up now and use the promo Grapes, they'll match your deposit up to $500. You get 10 spins on the big wheel for some big dough, and their first sports bet, they'll spot you 25 bucks. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, it was funny, Ace. We were just saying last night how 10 years ago, it was all most. It was all beer ads yeah. and hockey. Yeah, and like it was all Molsons or Labats and they and, and all that. And now it's all all cars. It's all yeah. cars and uh, no and cars. betting. Bet, it's all betting right now. Well, it's I, cars I, and betting. I have to laugh eh, at the disclaimer they all put. In the old days, is a don't drink and drive and all that. You mean drink drink all you want and enjoy our our beer, but well, you know, drink and drive. And now they say on the ba- on the gambling, you know, was be responsible. Yeah, well, they got to do that, right? They yeah, cover their got to do their disclaimer. So, Dad, big game last night, which was a real good one, was uh, yeah, it was good Winnipeg game. and Vegas. The Winnipeg kind of stole the first one, and the Jets won the next last two. And I got to add, they wandered over. They were Jets were down 4-1, going into the third, come back, just tie it up, and then they lose on a heartbreaker. It was a funky, like, off of yeah, the skate was. thing. So is it harder to lose 7-3 like the Leafs did the first game? Or is it harder to lose 4-3? I never like being beaten 3-2 or 4-3 or something like that. 3-2 or something. I always, if I, if we're going to lose, I wanted blown out, so I had something to work on. But I have to talk about that Morgan Byron uh, from uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Get 75 stitches and come back. He come back and he wanted to play. Uh, that is unbelievable. I, I, I know we talked about it, but, uh, you know, 75 stitches, that you see the... Skate, mm. I didn't like to see that. His teammates were teasing him. He's, he's, he looks like he attacked by his modeling days are over. Yeah, they said he looked like he got bit by a shark. <laughs> yeah, they were all teasing him. He said he was ready to go, though. Yeah, no, he played, put the thing on. So what was the most stitches you got? Most stitches? Because they I... looked at 75. They looked like they were small stitches, right? No, they were small. Not like us. Dad, you told me about an incident in uh, Cleveland. You really got it. In Cleveland. It was like the end of the game. I was stitched around the eye again, as usual. And um, so the doctor, he had a few drinks, and, you know. And it was nobody... right at the end of the game, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I kept on playing, and he just put a patch on it. And I remember, I remember lying there with all my equipment on, and the players are having a shower, and the, the fog is coming out of the shower, like, you know. And, and I knew he'd, he had a few drinks in him because he had a big drip on his nose. I could hardly see him. I could hardly see him. From and all he's the steam coming out of the yeah. shower. And the guys are throwing towels. Come on, grapes, let's get going. We got, got a long bus ride home, back home. And, and uh, But I never forgot that one. And I, I look up and I can hardly see his face. And here he is stitching up my eye. Yeah, but uh, Tell us a story about the Russian that came over uh, and asked the Canadian doctor when he got cut for international hockey. Yeah, what? that was over in... Uh, we were doing the world. You were coaching the world tournament in eighty one. I don't and, remember that. You, yeah, you, yeah you. We were there. So we were. Uh, we you played were there, the, Tim, right? Yeah, we played uh, the Russians. Should have won that game. That's a long story. The Trichek stood on his head. We were the only team to outshot the, uh, to outshoot the Russians that that yeah, tournament. We should have won. And um, Barry Long was. Oh, oh he boy. was like. He, <laughs> he was, was like. He was, Mike Myers, you know that the, in Halloween, but the stick. He was like that in front. I think the rest were afraid to call a penalty on him. He, I I couldn't believe that they didn't call a penalty on him. He was smashing and banging. Him. Yeah, he should have deported him. He was smashing guys. So he cut one Russian really bad. And towards the end of the game, and so I heard a knock on the door, and I opened the door, and there's a Russian. The bullet just pouring out the side of his eye. You answered the door. Yeah. So the I went to the trainer and I said. Uh, Jeez, there's this Russian player here. He's bleeding. Like, what's going on? I thought maybe he wanted to fight him or something. And uh, <laughs> yeah. the guy goes, oh, no. He goes, uh, he goes. He, they want our doctors to sew them up. Yeah. I go, what? He goes, yeah, our doctors are good. And then if you looked at the Russians back then, so like in 80, some of their scars, they look like a horse doctor. Oh, yeah. so, brutal. Sew them up. So Winnipeg loses. A uh, tough one. Can they, think, that can, was a, I, can they come back from that? Well, if any team can, Winnipeg can come back. I, I, I You know I like Winnipeg. And I like the I like their white with all white. Yeah, the whiteout was something. Yeah, the whiteout was something. Everybody wears white, 
And if any team can come back, uh, Winnipeg will come back. You know the one thing I, I, I really would have been upset if I was bonus the last game, game three, was there, it's in the was in the third period and they were really coming on. Yeah. And they, the uh, Vegas guys were on, they had about a two-minute shift and they were really getting tired. So Vegas ices the puck. Right, so it vices the puck, so they can't change. Yeah, and it's supposed to go down. Faceoff's going to be in Vegas's end. Well, the league called a sh- shovel timeout. You know where to to shovel the snow. Yeah, right. So bonus was going nuts, saying like, "Why are you doing this now? It's yeah. like a timeout for Vegas." Yeah, and then so by the time they were arguing and, and milling out, Vegas put the wrong guys on, so they made you know, and so they must have had a almost almost a forty second yeah. timeout, and that's exactly what they want at that time. That's what they yeah, and you go like, why you know the NHL? You think they would have a little bit of smart saying you can't do well, that? Well, that on, won't happen again. Was this in Winnipeg? In Winnipeg, you well, can't. Yeah, their guys should know that too. I mean, it's hurting their yeah, own but team. you're not you can do it's the league that that does that oh they so, won't do that again so they should make a rule that you can't do that time that shoveling on no, an they, they, they won't do that and it was in winnipeg it too. was winnipeg he, bonus was going bananas he yeah. was saying like what's going on here these guys are dead tired and you know vegas you know they were smart enough they put the wrong guys on no you got to get off and they were going and and they got a good 40 second timeout so yeah, smart 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 coach so dad Edmonton, L.A., you, Boy, that, you said, two. yeah, you said, don't bet the farm against L.A. They've checked McDavid pretty good, and uh, they're up 2-1. But you have to say McDavid gets two goals in a 3-2 game, and he gets two goals, and a, and a pretty good, uh, he took a pretty good hit against uh, Doughty, nailed him pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So the refereeing, though, in, the, in those well, games. Well, when know. you get two overtime goals uh, scored on power plays, um, like LA did, it's it's no good. I mean, it, I'm not chi- saying turn a blind eye if, if the guy, you know, if he, if he embarrassed the guy. But they were chintzy, especially that first one. Yeah, the guy's falling. He almost like he chipped over the blue line. Well, they use the and and you know what? And they and they, so then they they see the next game. They see a guy falling and with the same check and everything, and and nothing happens to them, and they lose in overtime. It is it is tough. And it's tough to watch, I'll tell you. Yeah. Well, even the game there, there was the the last game, uh, there was the high stick, and there was no doubt that the that the puck was hit by a high stick, and McDavid kind of went, and they, they kind of relaxed, and then they scored. And that's the thing I don't get. Where they said, "Well, they don't know if they can review it." Like, if you like, why not? Like, if if there's a problem, yeah. why can't they review it? And well. They don't want to. I guess they don't want to go to the games. They don't want to hold up the games for the fans too much. But but they do remember the one game we were watching. I forget which game it was, and there was like a fight, and uh, like the referees just should have said, you know, okay, five for fighting. Put them in the box. Let's get going. They must have went ten minutes. They went went to went to talk to the one coach. Then they talked to the other coach. Then they talked to the captains. Then they talked to the guy in the box. Then they talk. It's crazy. And nobody ever talked to us. Big game though, game four. L.A. or Edmonton's got to win. They can't go down three. No, they can't go down, and um, I think they will win. And uh, this is Sunday morning. I'm sort of a fan of uh, of McDavid, as you know, he comes from around here. And um, Edmonton will come back. Well, it was a rough series, uh, Mini and Stars. That's a rough series, I'll tell you that. Uh, And uh, Adumba really nailed Pavelski. And I'm I'm not saying it, it was a dirty hit. I mean the guy. The only thing is, could it was a little late. It was mean. It, it was a mean hit, <laughs> he and he meant to hurt him. That's what. <laughs> but boy, did he! Did he? And uh, he did hurt him. And, yeah. and um, it was a late hit. It yeah. was late, just a, a hair late. But the thing is, Dad, I don't understand. Is game one, you know, many wins, right? Upset. Yeah. The goalie Gustafson makes 51 saves. He's the guy that made, who won the game yeah, for Yeah, 51 him. saves. And then the next game, the coach puts in, he puts in Flurry, and he gets hammered. I don't know. I go with the hot goalie and um, I, they don't play that many games in the playoffs. And uh, Maybe I, the only thing I could think of was that he knew that Dallas was going to come out and he thought Fleur, let's see if Flurry could steal it from. Him. Yeah, maybe. And Flurry had been playing pretty good. Yeah, he'd been playing good up to them, but that was a that was a rough. Well, it should be a tough one. I'll tell you that is a that is the roughest series of them all. 
So now you're going to talk about the Subway series. I love to hear it uh, called that. Well, I told you, Tim, I told you that Kane was saving himself for the playoffs. Yeah. And uh, he, he did do pretty good. Two goals and three assists in game two. That's pretty good. In two games, yeah. And uh, he was saving himself for the playoffs. So the Rangers got the Rangers got off to a good start and won the first two games. But the one thing is that, again, you and I, we've talked about that uh, got, the winner in overtime was Got the winner was Dougie Hamilton. Dougie and, Hamilton, I I can't understand he's not being he's not being considered for the North as they say. Yeah. So okay. he had seven game winning goals. That was his eighth game winning goal this year. And they don't they you know they talk about Morrissey who's who and might, he's a plus too. And he's a yeah plus player. And we should talk about just jumping back to the Jets. That that's going to hurt that Morrissey's out for. Yeah. You know, he might be out for yeah. a long. Might yeah. be out for a while. But. We had uh, to <laughs> rough hockey. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the Devils and uh, they're up to Well, Rangers are healthy. That's the big thing of them. They're good and healthy. I used to go into the playoffs. Everybody's healthy. It's a good feeling. You know that everybody's ready to go. Healthy team is is a winning team. 